After Brooklyn's first seven games this year, Cam Thomas is averaging 28.7 points per game, which right now is the seventh most across the NBA. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive on Cam's game film to see how he's been able to find success in the early parts of this season and what things he can improve on going forward. So when we step back and look at Cam's shooting spreads, he does have a pretty balanced out shot diet, effectively being able to generate looks at all three levels. But so far this year, I think Cam has been doing his best work in the mid-range, shooting 64% on all his jumpers from under 17 feet. Now mechanically, Thomas has an old school style 90s jump shot, getting both a ton of lift into his jumper and having a high release point. Those mechanics allow Thomas to effectively generate in between looks without creating a ton of space, just simply using that lift to rise up and over contest. Cam Thomas, that's what he does. Now physically, Cam is a 6'3 stocky guard, and when Thomas puts the ball down, he's got a really low center of gravity, which makes it tough to push him off his driving line. On this play, you'll see this defender heavily leaning on Cam as he starts his downhill attack in an attempt to force him into the ball side help. But Cam's able to comfortably get to his spot to then stop on two feet and elevate right over him unbothered. Now Cam also likes to initiate contact off the dribble to create some additional space. Right here, watch Cam lower his shoulder into Karis Levert and he's able to just slightly bump him back. And from this spot, this is all the space Thomas needs to effectively rise up into his shot. Look at this play. You'll see Thomas's man trying to fight over the screen and watch how Cam veers back into his body to then plant off his right foot and separate for the step back jumper. Now I also think Cam has really good body control into his shot, being able to rise up into balanced jumpers even when his feet are in awkward angles. On this play, notice when Cam comes to a two foot stop, how his feet are pretty much squared up with the sideline. But from here, watch how Thomas elevates up and does a complete 180 in the air to get himself back squared up into his shot. Now Cam also likes to use that physicality to get all the way to the rim. And again, everything really comes back to Cam's strength as a straight line driver, being able to absorb bumps on the perimeter and attack into gaps like a fullback. Right here, you'll see Cam get into a left to right between, then float his feet up to build momentum. And once he starts his downhill drive, Notice how Curry leans all his body weight into him, again trying to take away his angle and force him into help side. But watch how Cam is able to stride right through that contact and step into this gap. And that low center of gravity is also really effective against more bigger and lengthy defenders. Take this play for example. He's now matched up against the 7 foot Derek Lively. And when Thomas gets into this right hand hezzy blow by, Lively doesn't have the leverage to wall off the stride and Cam's able to get all the way in front of them to then angle this layup back across towards the left, which takes away lively shot blocking. You'll see Cam use that same finish here, where he now has Evan Mobley trailing him, and he's expecting Thomas to rise up on the right side. But again, Cam's going to use the rim as a shield and get back to his left side. Now another counter Thomas has when he's going up against length is to rise up into these 8-10 to 10 foot floaters. And so far this year, Cam shot a pretty accurate 59% on all his runners. And what I love about these shots is that Cam has a variety of ways he likes to get into them. Watch this play. You'll see Thomas refuse his screen. And when he starts coming downhill, notice how he has this big just slightly backpedaling, which then gives Cam the levers to step into a one foot floater. But now look at this play where you'll again see Cam attacking into the paint, except this time the big now has his feet set. So now Cam's going to come to a two foot stop, which allows him to completely stop his downhill momentum and keep his space between him and the big, which now gives him a window to rise up. Now the next thing we have to go over is Cam's ball handling. Bang, 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 bang. This year I've seen a massive improvement in Cam's pace. Now Thomas has always had the ball on a string, but now I feel like he's starting to read and manipulate the defense. And sometimes it's just subtle things like this, where Cam's working off his pick, and notice how he gives a slight hesitation by both using his eyes to sell the pocket pass and skipping off his left foot. But from here, watch how Cam replants that left and explodes downhill. 
and that change of pace also carries over to Cam's isolation bag, where he not only plays at different speeds, but also quickly changes the level of his body to create separation. And because Cam's a real threat as a pull-up shooter, those level changes make him really tough to guard on an island. Here's a step back long to Cam Thomas Tyson. Right here, you'll see Cam playing with the ball back and forth. And watch him bring the rock through, then punch off his right foot, as if he's creating space for a step back. But watch how he lifts his shoulders up and curls the ball in, as if he's about to gather for a shot, which lifts the defense up and gives Thomas an angle to attack. You'll see him do the opposite here, by instead of lifting his body up, he's going to sell the Hezzy by dipping his body down, which again sells that he's about to pick up into a shot, which again completely pops the defense out of their stance. This is also one of Cam's go-to moves, where he lifts up and sells the left hand dry by dropping his shoulders and planting his outside foot. Then once he gets the defense to open up and expose their top foot, Cam's going to transfer the ball back between and dart downhill. You'll see him hit the same move here, where he sells the left hand drive by dropping those shoulders, and watch how that pushes Luca's right foot down. Then again, notice how Cam creeps his right foot up to attack Luca's top foot. Now, if I had to nitpick one thing about Cam's downhill scoring, it would have to be his left hand. Thomas is not overly comfortable attacking or getting into finishes going left having this tendency to bring the ball back across towards his right during finishes, even if he has a clear scoring angle to his left. Take this play for example. You'll see Cam effectively get into the paint with his left hand drive, and notice how he gets himself completely in front of the defense. From this spot, Cam has a clear window to extend the ball up with his left for a layup, but again he makes his shot way more difficult by bringing the ball back across towards his right. So let's move on and look at Cam scoring from behind the three. And similar to his mid-range game, Thomas has a high lift and release point into his shot, which allows him to effectively elevate over contests, and again, pretty much generate shots at will. Right here, you'll see him get matched up against the 7-3 Chris Stapps Porzingis. And from this spot, Cam does nothing super advanced to create space, just simply bring the ball to his pocket and lifting up and over the unicorn for a three. Now I would argue that Cam's 3 point shooting may be the most important element to his overall scoring back because that outside threat in return forces the defense to pick him up well beyond the 3 which then opens up Cam's mid range and downhill scoring. And we saw that effect pretty clearly last night against the Bucks, where Milwaukee multiple times let Cam get cleanly off these ball screens and step into these rhythm pull up 3's. So in response, Milwaukee tried to aggressively fight over these screens, but that in return gave Cam all this open space to work with, where he can just simply attack and get into his mid-range pull-up game. Thomas. It's good. So overall, Cam is a really versatile and dynamic 3-level scorer, having a variety of ways to generate offense. Whether he's using his physicality off the dribble, his creative handle, or using that high arcing jumper to rise over contests, Cam's going to find a way to create offense from pretty much every spot on the floor. But, that skill set can be a double-edged sword, because while sure Thomas does have the ability to both create and make tough shots, that tough scoring ability in return really hurts Cam as a playmaker. Cam with the ball at times, calmly plays with tunnel vision having his head down, and playing with one singular intention, which is just score, score, score. And this causes him to miss clear passing windows while playing in pick and roll, or isolation, which in return gives off ball defenders a license to over help and fully commit to Cam on the ball, without having much fear of Thomas punishing them with his playmaking. Right here, you'll see Cam turn the corner off his handoff, and notice how he pulls two defenders towards the ball. From this spot, the right pass is clearly back up to Dorian Finney-Smith, who's shooting 46% on catch and shoot threes. But Thomas from here doesn't even see that pass, and he instead elects to get into this tough contested step back. You'll see the same thing on this play, where Cam again pulls two defenders towards the ball, and he misses his open teammate popping out. And again, I think this all comes back to Cam's inability to read the entire court not being great at manipulating the defense, and picking apart off-ball rotations. 
Look at this play. You'll see Cam playing a two-man game on the right wing. And as he starts working off the screen, notice how these three Boston defenders sink in and collapse the paint. From here, Cam's not reading the weak side of the floor, which causes him to miss these possible skip passes, and it leads to another inefficient pull-up. Now, if we look at all the best offensive players across the league right now, guys like Jokic and Luka, they always have that dual threat of both scoring and playmaking. And even if we go back a few years, to guys like Prime, LeBron, Harden, and Westbrook, all those guys were not only great scorers, but also top tier passers across the league. And on the court, that passing threat fed into their scoring and gave them much more space to operate with. I think if Cam Thomas can find a way to upgrade his playmaking, that in return would make him a complete offensive player who can not only score at all three levels, but also has the passing chops that capitalize on the gravity he pulls.